on January 5, 1762, the short but very bright rain of Peter the Third began. It lasted only 186 days, but he spent the last 18 years of his life at an altruist throne making plans on how to reform Russia. Within six months, he issued 192 decrees, that is more than one decree per day. He abolished the secret police and the use of the word and matter of the sovereign. Basically anyone could denounce anyone with the use of the word and matter of the sovereign. You can imagine how many false allegations were made. Because if they were proven, the informant might get a price, ranging from a rank in the army or sometimes to a property of the accused. By the way, under Catherine, the secret police will be revived under the name of Secret Expedition. Peter returned a huge number of dignitaries and officers who have been exiled by his predecessor Elizabeth. Among those who returned was Field Marshal Munich who Peter later made one of his closest associates. He will remain loyal to him until the very end, as well as offer many plans of resistance against Catherine when she seized the throne. Peter started to secularize the state. The church owned enormous amounts of land and did not pay any tax, so he decided to make the church property state property. When Catherine came to power, she reversed the decision, but after a few years, she made the same reform and stole the credit for having the idea. Peter also created a state bank and started issuing paper money. At that point, only a few countries in Europe issued paper money. Catherine cancelled that reform also, and a few years later, renewed it in her own name. And once again, she did not give any credit to Peter. Peter championed free trade in Russia, and can be said to be the first environmentalist. He believed that the forest of Russia needed to be protected. That is why, for the first time in history, he created a law that would regulate the careful treatment of the forests. So it could be said he was Greta Thunberg of his time. Peter adopted the manifesto of the liberties of the gentry. He freed them from compulsory military service and gave them the right to leave the country, as well as gave them the right to give away their property as inheritance and sell their holdings to other people. He was so beloved by the people that Pugachev managed to start an entire rebellion just by pretending to be him. And during the Pugachev's rebellion, there was a rumor that Peter was going to free the peasants after he freed the gentry. For ordinary people, Peter was a hero. He was the one who began to speak with the peasants. He started religious tolerance in Russia, which was absolutely revolutionary for the time. But, if he was so beloved by the people, what got him killed? And that was his foreign policy. His plan was to make the Ottoman Empire attack Austria to help Prussia. And he planned on taking all of Schleswig Holstein and taking the crown of Denmark, basically annexing Denmark into Russia. But the thing that got him killed was Russia leaving the Seven Years' War. Catherine claimed that the withdrawal of Russia from the Seven Years' War was a betrayal of the Russian national interest, and rallied the military to oust him from power, and Peter was executed. But Russia did not restart the war with Prussia afterwards. So this could be one of two things. The first reason why might be because Russia left the war without gaining any land from it, and the second version was the English. The English played a role in overthrowing Peter. You see, England was Prussia's ally during the Seven Years' War, and it was completely in England's interest for Russia to end the war in such a bad peace terms for it. So it could be said that Catherine did England a big favor by overthrowing Peter. If you like this type of videos and you want to see more things like this from me, please like, share, and subscribe. It's been Ryan.